A little library growing every year is an honorable part of man's history. It is man's duty to have books. A library is not a luxury, but one of the necessities of life. Be certain that your house is adequately and properly furnished, with books rather than furniture. Both if you can, but books at any rate. Henry Ward Beecher Last month, my brother had some friends over and one of the girls told us that our home felt like a cozy place that she could curl up and read a book all evening. And I thought that that was possibly the highest compliment we could ever receive about our house. A home environment like that essentially lights a candle in the window for the world that is incessantly busy, noisy, and entertainment obsessed. Over the past few years, we have slowly, almost without even realizing it, begun creating a culture of books in our home. I began selling and donating the knickknacks that filled our shelves, and using every bit of spending money to purchase books to fill them instead. Our TV was taken down from the mantle and now sits disconnected in a spare room. Book stacks can be found on almost every shelf or surface. They're in the kitchen, in the living room, in the dining room, at the bedside. As William Gladstone once said, books are a delightful society. If you go into a room and find it full of books, even without taking them from the shelves, they seem to speak to you, to bid you welcome. Reading takes discipline and is a fight for our attention span in our flashy entertainment culture. It requires commitment and a firm belief that reading books is far more edifying than staring at a screen. I am in no way immune to the lure of the digital, but that's where the home environment comes in. It can't help but invite a culture of reading. The shelves filled top to bottom with books, the warm glow of the lamps at dusk, the deep comfy couch and the kettle whistling on the stove does not create the mood for loud shows and endless scrolling. It makes me want to pick up a book and settle down or engage in quiet conversation and drink a cozy cup of tea. It has been imperative to me these past few years to regain my focus and ability to immerse myself in a book the way I used to before social media. A huge part of my own culture of reading is commonplacing. I've been doing this for years before I even knew that this was what I was doing. A commonplace is essentially a notebook that is filled over time with quotes and excerpts and even your own general musings from the books that you are reading. I recently finished The Rare Jewel of Christian Contentment by Jeremiah Burroughs and now I need to write down my favorite quotes. When I read a book, I love to underline, highlight, and dog ear the pages. The reason I do this is because it essentially creates an abridged version of the book for me that I can return to again and again. Once I finish a book, I'm never truly finished with it. I'm constantly going back to it and gleaning inspiration from my favorite passages, and my markings help me to do that. Writing quotes at length in my commonplace helps me remember them better and reference them more easily. Contentment is the inward, quiet, gracious frame of spirit, freely submitting to and taking pleasure in God's disposal in every condition. Page 29. The reason why you have not got contentment in the things of the world is not because you have not got enough of them. That is not the reason. But the reason is because they are not things proportionable to that immortal soul of yours that is capable of God himself. Page 93. If you would get a contented life, do not grasp too much of the world. Do not take in more of the business of the world than God calls you to. Page 258. Here I have a quote about enjoying created things from a biblical perspective. Now I already have a page in another notebook categorized as beauty and enjoying created things, so I'm going to write this quote down in there. 
If there is any good in wealth, or in any comfort in this world, it is not so much that it pleases my sense, or that it suits my body, but that it has reference to God, the first being, that by these creatures somewhat of God's goodness might be conveyed to me, and I may have a sanctified use of the creature to draw me near to God, that I may enjoy more of God, and be made more serviceable for his glory in the place where he has set me. If you too feel inspired to create this kind of culture in your own home, I highly recommend the book Shelf Life by George and Karen Grant. I read it recently and it essentially was the inspiration for this video. A man's needs are few. The simpler the life, therefore the better. Indeed, only three things are truly necessary in order to make life happy. The blessing of God, the benefit of books, and the benevolence of friends. Thomas Chalmers <laughs>